why am I talking about these bigger risks? Isn't it just something psychological? Well, stress can have a very physiological effect on us. And to better understand that, we have to talk about the general adaptation syndrome. And so when we think about stress, we have to understand how our body normally is. So we talked about homeostasis back at our unit 10, but let's talk about it again. So homeostasis is keeping our body in balance, making sure we're not too awake, we're not too asleep, we're not too tense, we're not too loose. And so there's a lot of work at play in keeping the homeostasis of our body. Now what happens with a stressful event depends on what type of stressful event, but in a lot of cases, when we first become aware of something stressful or potentially stressful to us, we go through a very quick, very immediate stage known as the alarm stage. And so the alarm stage, as you can see with this little orange bar, our normal level of arousal takes a little bit of a dip here. We sort of, and this is when we go into a fight or flight sort of stage and we, we pause for a second. And so this is not very long lasting at all. But then, depending on what the stressful event is, we may proceed, or we might not, but if we do, we proceed to the resistance stage. Now this graph is a little bit uh, misrepresenting the resistance stage, because the resistance stage is long lasting. It can last anywhere from a couple of minutes, to an hour, to several hours, to several days, to a week or more. And so the resistance stage can be very long lasting. And what happens in the resistance stage is we're using a lot of body resources. Look at us, we're way more alert than we normally are. This is when we're really straining our system. And if we stay in the resistance stage too long, we're going to have inevitably crash in the exhaustion stage. And this is when we completely burn out and our systems start to break. So let's talk about the alarm resistance and exhaustion stages in a little bit more detail. When it comes to the alarm stage, as mentioned, this is very quick. And this is when your system is ringing the alarm bells. This is the idea that perhaps you hear a crash in the other room and you're worried that your roommate just fell or got hurt. So you're, oh, oh my goodness, what was that? And you run over to check on them. You might find out that everything's okay and then you don't go through resistance and exhaustion. You just go back to normal and homeostasis refines itself. But the alarm stage could be something that is not just a quick one event. You might find out, oh my gosh, a loved one has cancer. And so the minute you hear that as you're absorbing the news, regardless if it's going to be a chronic or very short term event, your body goes through a similar alarm response. And this is your heart starts to beat really fast. Your breathing slows down, your eyes dilate. And this is a bit of your panic mode. Some people may experience panic attacks during the alarm stage. We'll talk more about panic attacks in unit 15, but this is something that we may experience. We also tend to experience the fight, flight or freeze response. And so the fight response is the idea that let's say you're camping and you hear a rustling in the bushes and all of a sudden you hear what sounds like a bear. A fight response might be you're going to grab your skillet that or your frying pan that you were just roasting and you might go and run at the bear with a frying pan and go right into fight mode and attempt to attack the bear. Um, in comparison to the fight mode, you might also have a flight mode. And this is the idea, you're camping, you hear the rustling in the woods, and you see a bear, and you take off running for the ranger's cabin. And this is the idea that you just boop, or you take off running into your camper. And it's the idea that you just all of a sudden get lots of energy to your legs, and you dash. You think again, back to unit 10, we talked about how when you experience fear with a present threat, you get a lot of energy to your legs. So this helps us with our flight mode. But not all of us experience fight or flight. Some of us, when you hear the rustling in the tree branches and all of a sudden you see a bear, you just gasp and you freeze. And so you might experience freeze mode. And this can vary. The same person can experience combinations of fight, flight, or freeze within the same day or within different events that occur around the same time. But some of us are more prone to experience these than another. And so the alarm stage is really when you are alert to the threat, you're alert to the event that's going to cause you stress and you start to um, and you start to have a really dramatic physiological response to this psychological event. Now, if it's not something like a vase fold fell over, if it's something that's going to be longer lasting, then we tend to move into the second level. And this is the zone of resistance. And so resistance is now you're neglecting your bodily needs. You're neglecting your need for sleep or your need for hunger or your need just to take a break and relax. So what's happening here is let's say you have to do a 12 hour shift and six hours into the shift, you're starting to feel tired. 
Well, in the next half of the shift, you're going to really use a lot more resources than you usually do. You're straining yourself. Your muscles are tired. Your body is tired. You're drinking lots of caffeine, trying to stay awake. Now remember the resistance stage can last for a few hours, let's say at the end of a shift, and then you can go home and relax. If that's the, if that's the case, then you're probably not gonna go to exhaustion mode as long as you allow yourself to relax at regular intervals. But some of us stay in resistance mode much longer than a day. Some of us stay in there for the duration of our midterms, or we attempt to stay in resistance mode for the duration of a semester, and that's gonna cause a lot of problems to us. And that's because our body's not meant to say, stay in the sympathetic nervous system zone forever. We need to use our parasympathetic nervous system. We need to relax. And so what's happening here is we're neglecting our need for rest. We're just pushing through and carrying a heavier load than what we're meant to carry. Our body is using more resources in terms of the calories it's burning, its muscles are more tense, our heart is getting at a higher level, our blood pressure is increasing, and we are really not giving in to ourselves. Now, sometimes even if we want to relax, there's just real life issues that prevent us from doing so. We have responsibilities. We have to keep the ball going. If we're a caregiver and we're trying to take care of someone, we may not have the opportunity to relax. But it's important to understand this psychological event is causing real physical problems. It's making our, us grit our teeth, it's making us uh, clench our muscles, it's making us get knots in our stomach. And if we stay in this resistance mode too long, we will definitely end up in exhaustion mode. So what happens in exhaustion mode? Basically, our systems collapse. And depending on which system, it could depend on your own medical history or how long you were in resistance mode for. If you think about someone whose blood pressure was increasing and their heart rate was really a, a becoming overwhelming in resistance mode, they are much more likely to be at risk for a cardiovascular event when they hit exhaustion. This means that if you are at risk for heart disease, pushing yourself through during times of stress can increase your chances of a stroke or a heart attack. We also know that just by having tense muscles, this inflames our immune system. And when you're constantly using these more resources and pushing yourself, it's overworking the immune system and keeping you awake longer. So when you hit exhaustion mode, your immune system is actually at a weakened state, which means that you're at a heightened risk for infections, the bacterial, viral, fungal, what have you. You're more likely to get strep throat or fever or all kinds of different things. Now, aside from your immune system and your cardiovascular system, exhaustion just makes us tired. We're going to be fatigued and we're going to be at a much higher risk for things like injury and stubbing our toes and bonking our heads and making mistakes. So exhaustion mode is that idea that if you really push yourself for a whole semester, when you finally get that break, you spend that break in bed and you are catching up with a head cold or you have a fever and you don't know why. You don't know why you always get sick the first week of summer and the first week of Christmas break. And it's because you stayed in resistance mode for too long during the semester.